Welcome viewers. On today's video, I would like to share with you an operating system called Fide OS that I've been researching and working on to share with you for some time. This operating system has been in development since 2018 and it's an open source, cloud-driven operating system created by Chinese developers and available to English users. I'm really fascinated by their work and believe what they are doing is a game changer for those who are looking for a solution to run Android on PC hardware. Fide OS is not Android x86. In fact, it's Chrome OS with a full Android subsystem. This eliminates a lot of the challenges faced by members in the Android x86 community. And in my case, with working on mini PCs, this operating system brings me much closer than before to using them as full-fledged Android TV boxes. This video is going to be an eye-opener for lots of people in the Android streaming and gaming community. So pay close attention as the way we do Android is about to change. Welcome back. Please note, this video is not for beginners. So if you have never installed an operating system before, or you have never ventured into a PC's BIOS, then this procedure is probably not for you. However, I will do my best to break it down so that you can give it a try if you may. Before I proceed to the installation process, I want to give you a brief overview of some of the cool features you get with this operating system. Firstly, the base operating system is Chrome OS, so you get the full experience of a Chromebook and a Chrome browser. As you can see, you have the Chrome OS system settings and you have the Fide OS settings with automatic updates. Next, you have the Android subsystem and this is Android 9 Pi OS with the developer options enabled. Next, you have the Google Play Store and it's fully functional with Google Play games and automatic updates. The Play Store has to be installed separately as I will show you in a moment. Fide OS installs not rooted, but you can install root access if you so choose and I will also show you how to do that during this video. You can use a regular PC mouse and keyboard or you can navigate with only a mouse pointer with the on-screen keyboard. A major issue faced by the Android x86 community is getting audio by default through the HDMI port. With Fide OS, you have the option to switch between HDMI, internal speaker, and headphones once connected. You get a special Fide OS app store with apps specially designed to work on their system. You have the option to change the wallpaper. You get 4K display resolution along with built-in screen rotation and you also have display size settings. YouTube plays up to 4K 2160p. You have dual band Wi-Fi, Ethernet LAN, and Bluetooth function once it's available on the PC. And once everything has been installed correctly, you can install any app or game you like, and how they run will be determined by the PC's hardware. There are four things to note that you do not get with Fide OS. One is, you don't get Google Widevine Level 1. You get Widevine Level 3 with no HDCP protection. You can only add shortcuts to the taskbar. You cannot drag and drop shortcuts to the desktop, and that may be added in a later update. You don't get the option to convert external storage to shared internal storage, and you don't get HDR display and the digital surround sound audio formats. However, I read in the forums that they intend to include them in a later version. So to begin the installation process, you first have to decide how you want to use Fide OS and on what type of PC you would like to install it on. There are different ways you can run Fide OS. The first way is the portable way by running it directly off of a flash drive or portable external hard drive. 
This allows you to use it on different PCs without altering or losing your files, apps, or configurations. This is made possible due to the fact that your settings and configurations are stored in the cloud while your data is saved on the drive itself. The next option is the method I like to use the most, and that is installing the operating system in a dual boot configuration on a secondary internal hard drive or SSD. This can be done on a regular desktop, on a mini PC or laptop. This can even be done on a PC stick that has a micro SD card slot. And the third option is installing a Fired OS as your main operating system on the main hard drive. Seeing that my mission is to use a Windows Mini PC as a full-fledged Android TV box, for this demonstration, I will use a Mini PC that has a SATA expandable storage bay and install Fired OS in dual boot configuration. This way will allow me to keep my Windows operating system and enjoy Fired OS as a secondary operating system running independently on a separate hard drive but using 100% of the PC's hardware resources. Before you start the actual installation process, you first have to determine whether the PC has Intel or AMD hardware. The operating system is 100% compatible with Intel hardware, but it can also work on AMD Ryzen hardware, but you have to install a special version and you will need to adjust some settings to get the audio transmitted through the HDMI port. You don't have to do any of this on Intel PCs because everything works after the installation and it's 100% compatible. So for this demonstration, I will use an Intel Mini PC and in another video, I will just do an update to show you how it's done when applied to AMD Ryzen hardware. So the first thing you need to do after you install your hard drive is to start your PC in Windows. Next, you have to prepare the hard drive by formatting it or deleting partitions that may cause problems during the setup process. If the drive already has a partition, simply open File Browser right click on the drive and select quick format if the drive has partitions that are not recognized by windows then you need to delete those partitions using the free mini partition tool i will leave links in the description to all materials needed for this process simply open the mini partition tool Identify and select the drive you would like to install Fired OS on. Select the entire drive, click Delete All Partitions, and click Apply. You can choose to format the drive or leave it as is. It doesn't matter because the Flash tool will take care of the formatting process. Once completed, close the app and proceed to the next step. Next, you have to install the app that is going to flash Fired OS onto whatever drive or flash drive you choose. The recommended app for this process is Balena Etcher. This app is very similar to the app called Rufus used for Android x86. The only difference is that Balena Etcher allows you to install to any storage device connected to the PC, unlike Rufus that can only read flash drives. Next, you have to download the version of Fired OS that is suited to your PC. So all you do is head over to the Fired OS website. I recommend that you use the Chrome browser as it has a built-in translator. Most of the site is in Chinese and all you do in Chrome browser is right-click anywhere and select Translate to English. Then click on the Download Experience button to be taken to the Downloads page. You may need to right-click again to translate to English, or it may be translated automatically. For all desktops and mini PCs running on Intel hardware, you can use the latest stable release. If you are using AMD or Ryzen, then you will have to scroll down and use the Honor MagicBook version and it will work. If you attempt to use the latest stable version on an AMD or Ryzen PC, it will install as usual. However, when you attempt to use the Android subsystem, it will not work. So if you use this Magic Book version, the Android subsystem will work fine. And like I said, there is an additional step you need to perform to get audio working through HDMI on AMD and Ryzen PCs that I will show you in another video. I highly recommend that you first install Fired OS on a flash drive and then use the flash drive to install it on the PC. 
The reason for doing it this way is that it's the only method that shows you the option that allows you to install Fide OS and utilize the entire storage space on the drive. If you attempt to run the installation from Windows directly using Balena Etcher to a secondary hard drive that's connected to it, Balena Etcher does not give you that option and it will use only 2GB from the entire hard drive for the operating system. Given that you are using a mini PC, with the flash drive plugged in, press the power button and on your keyboard tap the delete button until you access the PC's BIOS. If you are using a desktop or laptop, the BIOS may look different but the process is basically the same. Once you have entered the BIOS, navigate to the save and exit tab and locate the boot override section. Here you will see one of the options as UEFI colon followed by the name of your flash drive. Select it and hit enter. This will start the Fired OS installation wizard. So this is the start of the wizard. Currently, the display looks very tiny. That is because the wizard is detecting my capture card that is set to 4K 2160p resolution. Once I get to the desktop, I will fix the display. So for now, I will simply zoom in until I get to the desktop. So to start the process, you will select your language and your keyboard preference. When you are done, click the OK button. Next is an important screen. This is what I was referring to when I was speaking about installing from a flash drive. If you would like to install Fired OS and utilize the entire storage space for the operating system, then you have to click on this installer button here and you will be taken to this screen where you will be given the option to perform a full disk installation or a multi-boot installation. So I would very much like to use the entire 256 gigabytes on my SSD and not just two gigabytes if I skip this step. Once you select full disk installation, click the next button. Here we have another important screen. This is where you select which drive you would like to install Fired OS on. Please note, you have to be mindful not to select the drive with your Windows installation on it or else it will format the drive and erase your Windows operating system. So in a usual situation where you just have two drives, the Windows installation is usually the SDB disk and the drive in the SATA expansion storage bay will be the SDA disk. So please be sure in case you have multiple drives connected to your PC. So I will select the SDA disk and click install. Once the installation process is complete, click the shutdown button and wait for the PC to shut down before removing the installation flash drive. The next step is yet another important step that will determine how you would like to run Fired OS and that is as your main operating system upon startup or to run it from a manual boot. To set this configuration, when you press the power button, quickly tap the delete button on the keyboard to re-enter the PC's BIOS. If you don't enter the PC's BIOS at this point, it will boot straight into the Windows operating system. So once you are in the BIOS, navigate to the boot tab and scroll all the way down to the UEFI add this configuration and hit enter. Here you will see boot option 1, 2 and 3. The one you want to adjust is the boot option number 1. Select and hit enter. From the list, if you want the PC to boot directly into Fired OS, you have to select the UEFI entry for the Fired OS installation. Sometimes you may see duplicate entries depending on how many times you attempted the installation. Simply select the first one after the Windows boot entry and if that one doesn't work, reboot the system enter the BIOS again and select the other one and that will be the correct one. Once you have selected the correct UEFI entry for the Fired OS installation, navigate to the exit screen and select save and exit to reboot the PC and it should now boot directly into Fired OS upon every restart. Once everything is done correctly, you will be presented with your first official Fired OS Startup Wizard. 
Choose your language and keyboard and click OK. You will be presented with this screen again and this time it does not have the installer option. Select Let's Go to continue. Now connect to your network, be it Wi-Fi or Ethernet LAN and click Next. Click Agree and continue and you'll be taken to the Fired OS Cloud Server login page. If you don't already have a Fired OS account, then you are given the option at this point to create one. Once you have created and logged into your account, you are then given the option to continue using your Fired OS login credentials or you are given the option to use your Google account to log in at every startup. The choice is yours, it doesn't really matter which one you use as it doesn't change any features of the operating system, it just gives you the option to use the username and password that will be easier for you to remember when logging in. Once all is set, click Get Started to start using your Fired OS operating system. You should now be at the Fido West launcher. If you are using a 4K monitor or TV as your display, as I mentioned to you earlier, everything is going to look tiny. So I will now show you how to quickly fix this issue. At the bottom left of the screen, click this little circle here to open up the apps section. Then click this little circle on the right here to scroll down where you will see the settings gear. Click on it to open the system settings. Then on the left panel, select Devices and then go to Display. Here you will see the option to increase the screen size. Slide all the way to the right to fill your screen's display. Now close the settings area and you now have a fully functional Chrome OS operating system. But it doesn't stop there. Remember, you also have a fully functional Android subsystem. So I'll show you how to set that up now. So now on to the exciting stuff where I activate the Android subsystem and turn this mini PC into an Android TV box. First, click to open the app section and click on the Android Gears icon. This will open up the Android subsystem activation. Click the checkbox to agree to the license agreement and click launch. So you now have a fully functional Android subsystem running on top of Chrome OS, but it's just a core operating system and it does not have any Google Play Store or Google Play services. To get these services so that you can install Android apps and games, you first have to install OpenGaps that contains the Google Play Store and all Google Play services. To install them, Fired OS have included OpenGaps as an app on their Fired OS app store. So open the app section again and click on the shopping bag icon to open up the Fired OS App Store. On the left panel, search for gaps using the search field. You will get one result which is an app called Configure Open Gaps. Click on it to install and it will download the app to the downloads folder. You can either click on it as soon as it has downloaded or you can use the file explorer to navigate to the downloads folder where you will see it. Complete the installation process and then the app will prompt you to restart. Once restarted, give the operating system about a minute to automatically install Google Play services in the background. Once it is done, it will add the Google Play Store icon to the app section. So you can now open the Google Play Store and log in with your Google account and install both 32 and 64-bit apps and games. However, if you install the Root Checker app, it will show that you do not have root access. So to truly unlock the full power of this operating system to use it in an unrestricted way like we do on most TV boxes, then we have to gain root access. To do this, you have to install the Super User app along with core root permissions. But doing this is not straightforward as it requires installing these apps using Linux commands. 
This is the final step and I will try my best to make it as easy as possible for you to follow. So to root FidoS, you first have to download the Arab 10 zip file that contains the super user app along with some root files to execute in Linux. You can download Arab directly from GitHub or from the file sharing link in the description below this video. Once downloaded, using your favorite file explorer, you have to extract the files from the zip folder into the main Android downloads folder. The default file explorer for file OS I personally do not like because of how it responds to mouse pointers. So I personally like to use the FX file explorer found on the Google Play Store. A link to FX file explorer can be found in the description below this video. So I've downloaded the Arab 10 zip file into the downloads folder. What you now have to do is extract the files into the downloads folder. In FX File Explorer, simply double click on the zip file and it will open it using its built-in zip feature. Using the mouse pointer, long click on the first file until it is highlighted. Then holding down the control button on the keyboard, select all other files. Then in the top right corner, click copy. Using the back arrow, return to the downloads main folder. Then click the copy symbol in the top right corner again. And at the bottom, click paste to extract the files into the main folder. Before you exit your file explorer, whichever one you choose to perform this process, I recommend that you first install the super user app. Once installed, you can close the file explorer and proceed to the next step. At this point, even though I've just installed the super user app, you will not get root access until you install the root.sh file. Now, before I perform the next steps, I would like to inform everyone watching this video that I'm not a professional Linux user and all I know is some very basic Linux commands. So what I'm about to show is what I've learned by watching and reading what others have done. So please don't ask me for advice on advanced Linux commands to solve issues because I will not be able to assist. And if there's anyone watching who has advanced knowledge of Linux commands, you can feel free to advise, assist or correct me or anyone about a better way or easier way to perform this process. In my follow-up video where I will be showing how to install FIDOS on AMD and Ryzen PCs, I will definitely be needing some assistance for a final step that has been giving me some problems to execute. So to install the root.sh file, on your keyboard, press the Ctrl, Alt and T keys at the same time to open up a terminal. Next, type shell to start the Linux command interpreter and hit enter. Next. Type CD, which stands for change directory, space, followed by tilde, forward slash, downloads with a capital D. This command will access the downloads folder where you unzipped the Arab 10 files. Next, type sudo su and hit enter. This command grants permission to execute special commands in a folder that may be protected. Next, type ls, space, followed by dash l and hit enter. This will list all of the files in the download folder in a list format. You should now be seeing the root.sh file you want to execute. If you attempt to execute the root.sh file at this point, the command will fail and that is because the file is not executable. If it was, it would be in the color green. So to fix this, you have to change or modify the file to make it executable. To do this, type chmod spacebar. This is the command to change the mode of a file, followed by plus sign x spacebar, which adds the executable format to change the file to, followed by the name of the file you want to change, in this case, that is root.sh, and hit enter. Now type ls space dash l again, and hit enter to list the files again. And this time, the root.sh file should be in green. 
If it is, then it's ready to execute. If it's not, then you need to start over. Now to execute the command, type sudo spacebar to grant permission. Then type bash to execute the sh file, spacebar followed by root.sh, which is the file to execute, and hit enter. This will start executing the root file, which takes a little while depending on the speed of your PC. And once it is done, it will prompt you to reboot the system. Type sudo reboot and hit enter, and the PC should reboot. If it doesn't, don't worry about it, just restart FidoS. Once you restart, open the root checker app and the super user app is supposed to ask you to grant permission. Click grant permission and it should now show that FidoS is rooted. You are now free to install any app you want from the Play Store or sideload it without restrictions. So now that you have successfully installed FidoS and have root access if you so choose, it's worth mentioning that with this operating system, you have access to the official version of Netflix and Amazon Prime Video via the Chromium browser. However, due to Chrome OS not having HDR or Dolby Vision support at this time, you are restricted to standard quality. You can play both 32 and 64-bit Android games. However, I could not get the 32-bit gamepad key mapping apps to work, only the 64-bit panda key mapping app worked, but there aren't many 64-bit Android games for it. Started here. Castledine is making a start here. I wonder what sort of a role is he expected to play, Jim? He's just got great feet, Peter. He's a natural, pure and simple. Just seems to have the and Quiros! So viewers, there you have it. This is my new dual boot operating system for mini PCs until Android X86 improves or something better comes along. Also, Please note that FideOS is in beta, but it has been in beta since 2018, so there's no telling if they would stop the beta and start using a subscription service, so until then, it's free to use. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if the information contained in this video was of value. If there's anything you didn't understand, feel free to ask for more information in the comments or send me an email. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you are a first time viewer, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell before leaving to be notified when I release new updates on this operating system in the future. Stay tuned and I'll be seeing you in the next one.